hey guys what's going on welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi how are you today's video is just going to be what i did today which is monday march 28th i was sick over the weekend so i got zero work done but i'm definitely feeling a lot better now but as you can probably hear my nose is still stuffy so today i'm just taking it easy and doing a lot of little things i couldn't figure out what i wanted to record for a video so i said you know what let's just record what the heck i'm doing today <laughs> so these are the shirts that i made on that live stream i did on what day was it friday so i never got a chance to ship them out because i ended up waking up sick saturday so they're gonna go out now um so what i'm putting on it right now this is called tender touch so it is to cover the stitching um so that it doesn't irritate the child's skin so i heated on it for about uh, 310 degrees about five to ten seconds um and that's pretty much it so i have three shirts and i'm gonna go ahead and get done real quick so here is what the back looks like with the tender touch on it um like i said it just covers the stitching so for shirts that i have appliques which is like a piece of fabric on the front i heat the front as well for five seconds at 310 degrees because the fabric does have heat and bond light on it so in order to uh, adhere it to the shirt you need to heat the front as well Oh my god, I totally look like a Teletubby right now. <laughs> but here I am opening some packages that I got last week. You guys wanted to know what I put my uh, thermal printer rolls on for my shipping labels. So I got um, a toilet paper roll from Amazon. And this is a new scale that I got because my scale was stolen and taken downstairs <laughs> for AJ Blinks. So I got myself a new scale for up here and that toilet paper roll. So I'm going to go ahead and get that unwrapped and set. So I get this huge roll and put it at the bottom so that it stabilizes the um, toilet paper holder and then um, screw the top piece on and then I'm just going to put the other roll on the top and then this whole thing is going to go under my desk because the Rolo label printer is on my desk and um, feed up through the back of the wall. Now that I have my roller label all set up, now I'm going to print the shipping labels for my Etsy orders that I just tender touched. Now it's time to get all these orders packaged and ready to go. So I just double check my shirts, name, age, and little threads that could be uh, on the shirt that I didn't cut yet. So that's what I do now and then I just package them away and they go off to the post office. Now I have this design that I really have been wanting to make and like I said I couldn't decide what type of video to do whether it was going to be making new things or if it was going to be a tumblr video so I just did whatever I wanted to do today. So this software right here is in Brilliance Essentials. It is linked down below. It is an, an embroidery software, so you can buy designs off Etsy. And as you see, I'm doing changing the colors, adding names. And you can also buy like Stitch Artist, which is a digitizing software where you can create your designs from scratch. But here I'm just using the features of Embrilliance Essentials. So 
just changing colors to uh, my Madeira Poly Neon colors because those are the threads that I use just to make sure the colors come out how I like them so I can see all the colors together and have a better idea as if my colors match. Since I already made the design, now it's time to put it on a real shirt. So I'm watching Danny right now. I can't believe she has two machines already. So good for her. Proud of her and all her hard work. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hoop up my shirt. This is the 8x9 Mighty Hoop. And that ring you just saw me use is a backing holder that you can get from MightyHoop.com. If you do want free shipping on your Mighty Hoops, you can call them and use code KIDSCUSTOMS. Again, all the information will be in the description. Um, so Mighty Hoops are like magnetic hoops, so it makes hooping a lot easier. So I'm just making sure it's straight um, and not crooked. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the hoop on. And then it goes off to the machine, but make sure you take that backing holder out. Now I'm going to go ahead and get all the fabrics I need for this design. This is a applique fabric, meaning it has some sort of fabric inside of the stitching. So I need like tan, I need lavender, pink, aqua. Um, so I'm going to get a piece of each of these that I need and then after I do that I'm gonna get heat and bond light um, and what heat and bond light is is um, I put it it adheres to the back of fabric so and then it'll adhere to the shirt so what it does with the fabric is it helps it not fray and it like gives it a crisper look when you're done embroidering um, it's not all wrinkly because I didn't use heat and bond light when I first started and after my shirts were washed they were all wrinkly so I learned <laughs> to always use heat and bond light. Now I'm gonna go ahead and heat press them for about five seconds and that's pretty much it. You just go ahead and peel off the white paper and you see that clear um, shiny backing that is the side that goes down on the um, shirt. And then you just embroider and this is called the tack down stitch. Now that it's done with the tack down stitch, I now need to cut the fabric. I'm trying to use these applique scissors, guys, but these are not my favorite. <laughs> my favorite are the Fiskars Curve Scissors. Everyone has their own that they prefer. Um, these, I just always end up cutting the shirt. I always do. I always do. Now, sometimes it is easier if I like my other scissors are not sharp, but like I end up cutting the shirt every single time. So. It's up to you pick whichever scissors you like um and they're all linked down below for my amazon list so you can figure out which ones you like but the viscous curve scissors are orange and i like those now i have another design i want to make I'm using a black shirt. I've been trying to use up my black shirts and it's hard to find a design for girls that looks cute on black, but I think I found the perfect design. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this black shirt hooped up and put on the machine and we'll see how it turns out. Also, these shirts are from ajblanks.com. They are linked down in the description box if you are interested in them. Now we're getting a delivery, which arrived early, which is our sublimation blanks. So now I need to go get those. All right, so now that the sublimation blanks are here, um, I've counted all the quantities. I've double checked everything, made sure all the boxes were here. So now I just need to go ahead and add them to the website for you guys to buy. So as you see, there's a very limited quantity of sublimation blanks. So these are the girls ruffle and boys short sleeve or unisex short sleeve uh, sublimation blanks. They are 100% polyester. They are thicker a little thicker than most so go ahead and buy them from ajblinks.com um they probably will sell out but that'd be a good thing for me <laughs> so i will be placing another order guys so don't be too upset if they're sold out by the time you get to the website but 
yes. After I add them all, then we'll continue with our day. So I do have some tumblers that I also wanted to make. I told y'all I had so many different things I wanted to do today and I'm doing everything instead. No dedicated video. <laughs> so um, I wanted to see how these designs printed and I'm also having issues with my tumblers, um, the bottom not coming out like seamless. Like it's like blotchy at the bottom, bottom of the tumbler. So I'm trying to work on that. Um, these are like my newest two tumblers I've made. I haven't made any other tumblers since the last video. So I'm just gonna see if I have any better luck with a different taping method. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and print them. And this is the Epson F570 that I am using. If you're interested in purchasing one, there'll be um, information in the description to contact Todd. Um, that's who I bought my sublimation printed through. Ordered it on Wednesday and got it on a Friday. So that was crazy fast. Um, but they do have a warehouse in New Jersey. That's why I got it so quickly. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get my artwork ready and I'm gonna go ahead and print it. So I am trying using this cutter to see if I like it better. So the differences I'm gonna make between the last time and this time, I'm going to leave a little tiny bit on the bottom in terms of the white showing for the bottom of the cup and then cut it exactly. Like the, all the other three sides are gonna be like a perfect cut. The uh, bottom layer that's gonna be touching the tumbler where the seam would be. Um, that's going to be cut flush, so literally no white showing. But the other side, that's going to layer on top. I'm going to leave a tiny bit of white. And again, the uh, bottom is going to have white. The top's going to be cut perfect, like no white showing. And by white, I mean sublimation paper. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm pretty much using that little... Uh, orange thing there's like a little notch on it to see where the paper lines up i want to make sure i'm cutting straight so i'm like i push that back and forth just to make sure it lines up evenly all the way down before i cut so i'm gonna go ahead and lint roll my tumbler these tumblers are from ajblanks.com um we sell them there they come with shrink wrap a metal straw and the plastic straw um, obviously they have lids on them and they come with their own individual boxes um, so you can purchase them there so I'm trying a different method okay because my other methods weren't working too well so I'm gonna try putting the cup upside down and then having the transfer touch the table that way I know it's completely even um, for the top end of the cup like I said the bottom of the cup is where I'm having the issues so at least I know this way the top is like perfect there's no messing up the top um, and you need to like get these as tight as possible. So I'm trying to make sure I have it tight. All right, so now I'm trying to tape. So I'm trying to tape the paper that is overlapping the first piece of the transfer. Um, and that way it kind of tightens it because you're pulling it. So you see how like the top piece is overlapping. So I'm trying to place it on the top piece and then pull that. That way I know it's tight. And guys, I'm not a professional with this at all. I like, I literally am still learning 100%. So we'll see how this turns out. So you don't gotta follow my rules because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just winging it and hoping it works. And as I go, obviously I'll get better and figure out which way works best for me. I did add like thicker tape to the edge. Um, so that was something new I bought since the last time I did tumblers. And again, I'm going to start with that overlapping piece. That way I can pull it tightly. So this is going to be the bottom of the tumbler. So I'm just going to wrap it around the bottom just to make sure it is secure. But this one's not like a tight wrap. Um, I'm going to put another piece to do the tight wrap. But this is just to secure it to the bottom of the cup. Um, and after watching a lot of videos, what a lot of people were saying was to make sure there's no wrinkles like at the edge of the bottom of the cup like where the curve is so i'm just trying to make sure that there's no wrinkles or anything um, when i'm doing this like i said i've had plenty of issues with the bottom of my tumblers and that's why i have not sold any yet but i do plan on selling them on angelojasmina.com when i've got them good to go i'm not selling anything that is some boo-boo crap so I'm going to grab another piece of tape and I'm going to layer it on top. And this is the piece of tape that is going to be folded over. Um, and this one is going to be pulled very tightly. Um, so 
we'll see how it turns out. Like I said, I'm just, I'm just winging it. I'm just trying to figure out which method works for me and what I'm doing. Um, so it doesn't hurt to try. So we'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to push all the pieces of tape down and try not to have any wrinkles on the edges, like the edge, edge, the bottom doesn't matter, but like the edge of the bottom, <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same thing with the top. Um, and that's pretty much it. And after we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and throw it on the heat press. Actually, I lied. <laughs> we also have to tape the seam down. Um, so I'm curious if using the big, bigger, fatter, thicker pieces, piece of tape is going to help. Um, but we'll see at the end if it does or not. And obviously you want to use butcher paper um, to make sure it doesn't bleed through like the sublimation ink because it has actually gotten on the butcher paper. So um, I do it just to be safe. <laughs> that was me holding back a cough. Um, so rather be safe than sorry. And a lot of you have mentioned that I should buy my butcher paper from Sam's Club. So thank you. And for those who don't know, buy a butcher paper from Sam's Club. If you have a Sam's Club membership, it's like $20 for forever lifetime roll <laughs> roll it's like supposedly like a lot of butch paper on it so i'm just gonna go ahead and cut this one out as well um i feel like i didn't cut the edges as close as i would like i think there's a little bit of white showing but it's so hard to tell that's the one thing about these things it's hard to tell if you cut the white so i think going forward i'm gonna actually cut just the tiniest bit of the color um and hope i don't cut too far because the white is no joke because at least if you cut too too far then you could tell before you even make the whole tumbler but if you don't cut enough you can't tell till you're done making it so that's just gonna be my my way going forward because paper is definitely cheaper than a tumbler all right so this is my heat press from heat press nation there's a link down below to this one this is the tumbler attachment i'm using so it's made exactly for these tumblers which makes it so much easier so 365 degrees for 70 seconds and then you're gonna flip it and then do another another 70 seconds so you flip it 180 degrees so when it's done like i said i'm just gonna pop it open and then turn it and i do seam like i don't put the seam in the middle i put the seam you'll see where it goes see ready set there on the side um so i put one on one side and one on the other when i flip it and that's pretty much it then you'll take it out i do have a heat mat that i use um that way um it doesn't mess up any of my counters because some things are hot i don't know if people peel these hot i can't peel it hot so i just put it on the little table thingy cover and wait for it to cool off a little bit Oh my god, I don't know how I ended up in slow motion. Okay, let's touch these tumblers. <laughs> Alright, hold on, let me take it out of slow motion. I had to speed it up times eight, so it looks kind of normal. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap it. I was, hot. I was trying to move it um, to get it out the way, but someone suggested I use my weeding tool to rip the tape, and it's a lot easier, which, <laughs> look, they were, tr they were telling the truth. <laughs> so thank you. So... Um, I also find it's easier to just peel those four pieces of tape off. Um, I don't know why I was trying to just rip and rip and rip and look like it was Christmas. But this was definitely a lot easier. And look at those colors, guys. Oh my gosh. Like, literally looks like the beach. Like, look at those colors and look at the edge. The seam looks great, too. And the edge actually worked. So, super happy about that. Um, I think it turned out great. All right, so here is the next tumbler. So unwrapping it and everything. And I'm so impressed by the colors already. I'm just like, wow, these colors are so beautiful. I was super excited. Now the bottom of this one, I, I already know I messed up because I didn't tape it correctly and I should have just untaped it and retaped it, but I got lazy and like, well, we'll see. So colors wise, A, the seam, F. <laughs> but yeah, that's how it turned out. So now I have new backdrops. I told you guys about these in a few videos ago. I buy my backdrops for my Etsy pictures from inkandelm.com. They have the best backdrops. And the other one I had before this, I bought a huge backdrop because I was taking like mannequin pictures. But I don't need that anymore because I'm just using my light box and I just make t-shirts. I no longer make tutus. So that backdrop, I had cut it up and it's been through like two moves. It got messed up. 
so I really needed to buy another one. So this is a two foot by two foot backdrop. Um, so it's really not that expensive. And um, so these are the two backdrops I got. I really love this one. I just bought it because I liked it. Um, my Etsy shop is just the white wood backdrop, which you'll see here in a second. That one, that's one I already have. Um, I just bought a new one. Um, but the other one, I just think it's so cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this inside of my light box, which was from Amazon, which is linked down below. It's like a link that says like Amazon, things I use from Amazon and you'll find the light box there. Just throw it in, plug it in and take pictures of the new shirts that I, you saw me make earlier today. Yes, I did use thread to hold the edges down because it was brand new, but I literally just throw it right in the box. So I take pictures just like this. Um, I use my phone, so I have an iPhone 10, I think, um, and I use that to take pictures. I don't use any fancy cameras or anything, just my my phone, that's it. I like to take pictures um, different angles or different styles, so I like to fold it up. Then I also like to take a video of it. Um, the more pictures you have on Etsy, the better, so don't just take one picture of your shirt, take multiple pictures. So after I take pictures of everything, I'm going to go ahead and edit the pictures. To edit my pictures, I use Adobe Photoshop. Um, this is how I used to even put my watermark on there, which is my logo. And all I do is uh, image adjustment, brightness. That is all. That is it. There's no other fine tuning that I do. And then I like to save all my photos in a folder that I have called Finished Embroidery Photos. That way it's easy to find when I upload them all to Etsy. All right, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video thus far, my whatever day video. Just pretty much what I did today, although I was sick over the weekend, started to get work done and had fun today. If you did, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button for more videos. And if you have any questions or any comments or any video ideas, please go ahead and leave them in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.